This is Rob Cedar. Uh, if you follow my blog, you may have seen that I talk about using Hyper-V on a Windows 8 machine and bringing up new instances of machines. Uh, so I wanted to make a, just a quick video to show how to do that. And the assumption here is that you have Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 Professional. Uh, Hyper-V is included with Professional, but not with the um, just the regular um, version of Windows, Windows 8 that's just called Windows 8. You specifically need the one that says Windows 8 Pro. Uh, to start, uh, for, first of all, if you go into Programs and Programs and Features, and here's the path of where that is in Windows Explorer. It's basically inside of Control Panel. Uh, what you need to do is on the left-hand side, there's this option for Turn Windows Features On or Off. If you click on that, that brings up a window, and in here, there's an option for, for Hyper-V. By default, that's normally turned off, so you just simply click, you know, to just check off that uh, top-level Hyper-V, click OK, uh, and basically that will install Hyper-V. And what that is is just nothing more than a um, mechanism or a facility to manage virtual machines on your workstation. So let's assume that you now have that installed. You can open up the Hyper-V Manager, which you'll see if you just hit the Start button and type Hyper. Uh, you'll see that this is the Hyper-V Manager um, that, that will come up. And by default, since I do some Windows Phone development, there's some other um, emulator VMs in here. But other than that, I actually don't have any other virtual machines set up uh, at the moment on this, on this machine. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was how to set up a Linux implement uh, or Linux virtual machine here. So in this case, we're um, talking about Ubuntu Linux. Uh, so what I did was I went to Ubuntu.com, uh, and then here under Server or Desktop, it's really your choice here. Uh, but if you but if you go into here, you'll eventually find see the Get Ubuntu Now, and and here you'll see that you can download the 32-bit or the 64-bit version of the Ubuntu operating system, either for workstation or for server. So in this case, I believe I downloaded the 32-bit desktop version. And so that's what's on my desktop here. It's an ISO file, and it's about 700 megabytes. So I have Hyper-V on my machine. I downloaded the ISO, which an ISO file is simply just the image of a DVD. Uh, I downloaded that on my local machine. And so how do I actually go to create a virtual machine? Well, if you have Hyper-V, uh, the Hyper-V manager uh, opened, uh, over on the right-hand side, there's this option for New Virtual Machine. If you click on that, that brings you into a wizard, which is uh, pretty standard here. Uh, what I typically do here is I want to name the virtual machine the same name I'm going to give it inside of the operating system. So there's sort of two viewpoints. One is what it looks like from my operating system, and then the other viewpoint is within that operating system, you know, what it thinks its name is. So it, obviously it makes sense to sort of keep those in line. So in this case, if I'm going to call this, let's say, uh, Ubuntu 1, that, that's what I'm going to rename the, the machine to, you know, once it's actually installed. Uh, and also that's how I'll identify it here within my, within my own Hyper-V manager. Uh, you can change the path where this is loaded, and same thing for disk drives. Uh, for another machine where I actually have uh, several more uh, Hyper-V um, uh, servers installed, I actually did get a, um, an SSD drive because if you do put, uh, for example, even two virtual machines on a slower, let's say a 5400 RPM drive, uh, you will notice that the, those machines will be very, very slow. So uh, one thing I did do is I got an SSD drive, a solid state drive, which is very fast in comparison to a mechanical drive, and I have my... Um, I have all my machines basically running off of that, uh, uh, several machines running off of one uh, solid state drive. Uh, so this is the machine name. This is where it's going to store the definition for that server. For, for that, you know, it doesn't even have to be a server. You can do this with workstations too. Uh, the generation one and generation two, uh, I, this is new to, I think Windows, I think it's in Windows 8.1 this changed, I think. Um, but the point is this, this includes the secure boot stuff. And I have not gotten any operating system work with <laughs> work with this generation two thing, so um, I but you have to pardon my ignorance. I don't I, I don't really understand what this is, um, and it doesn't seem to work with any operating system I've tried to install using it. Uh, so I'll use the generation one, which is the the traditional um, Hyper-V um, implementation. Here's how much memory you can give it. Uh, and it sort of depends on how much memory you have in your machine. Uh, and for a Linux machine, I think you pretty much just need, you know, half a gigabyte or, you know, 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, but if you can afford to give it more, that would be good. And RAM is cheap enough nowadays where you can pretty much, you know, you, you, you can really upgrade your machine significantly for, for not very much cost at all. Uh, this next thing is really useful, too. Uh, this thing called dynamic memory. And this is the notion where, um, like, in this, like in this case, if I set this to 2048, give this machine two gigabytes of RAM, 
Uh, if, I, if I turn on dynamic memory, it'll boot up with two gigabytes of RAM, and I think it's after five minutes, it, it basically starts ramping back, uh, ramp, ramping back how much memory it's using. And so, you know, a few minutes later, you'll see that this is only using like, you know, let's say 700 megabytes of RAM. And so this is a way that you can actually run more machines on, on, your, on your local machine where it's basically not going to use uh, nearly as much RAM. Uh, but I'll turn that off for now. I, I have a good amount of RAM in this machine. Here's where you choose uh, which kind of networking or if you want to have this thing connected to the network at all. But in this case, I'm on a desktop machine. I have an Ethernet card, so I'm going to have it use um, that, that, uh, the, the network switch that's already set up for, for Hyper-V. And here is where you can set up where the hard drive will be. And again, you can put this on a different, uh, for example, if you did have a separate SSD um, specifically you wanted for this, you could also obviously uh, put that there. Uh, and this is also the maximum size of the hard drive. And this is one of those things where uh, Hyper-V only uses as much disk space as it needs. Uh, uh, it's difficult to explain. When you're inside of the, ho of, the, of the hosted machine, it'll look like, in this case, that you have a 127 gig drive, but you don't actually. It, just, it, it won't actually use 127 gigabytes on your real hard drive unless you're actually really using 127 gigabytes inside of the machine that's hosted. So anyway this is the maximum size of the hard drive that as far as how big you want it to be able to to get and obviously you need to take into account how much disk space you have on your physical drive for this because obviously that can you can run into problems and then lastly uh to just then this is just more of a convenience thing uh you could very well say i don't want to install an operating system and it'll basically just boot you know the virtual machine will boot up and say i don't see an operating system but one of the things i will let you do uh, which again is very uh, convenient I can click here, install an operating system uh, from a DVD, in which case I can point to a real physical DVD I have in my, on, on my local computer, uh, or even better, I can point to an ISO. Now you might remember on my desktop, I pointed to this, I downloaded this ISO file. So I can just simply point to that and have it install that. So I'll click next. And this just, just gives you a summary of what it's going to do. It's going to call this machine, call Ubuntu. Uh, it's going to be a Generation 1 image. I'm giving it 2 gig of RAM, connecting it to my local network. Uh, here's where the hard drive is going to be, the virtual hard drive that the operating system is going to use. Uh, and then it's going to try to install the operating system on it. So if I click Finish and wait patiently, we'll see, sure enough, we have a virtual machine here, and it's turned off. And uh, there's two, two things. One is you can go here and you can click on settings and uh, go and look and modify, you know, all sorts of settings uh, for this machine, including useful things, by the way. For example, uh, what it should do when your computer first starts uh, or if you're trying to shut down your computer, what it should do, whether it should try to turn off the machine or shut down the operating system or just save it in its current state. So there's a lot of useful things here. And obviously you can add more hard drives, point to different network cards, all sorts of things. Uh, so the point is that from here you can do start, um, yeah, and you can basically see the status of it when it is up and running. You can also double click it from here, and this is going to bring up the virtual machine console basically. And so again, you can you can think of a virtual machine kind of like a real physical machine. So here, if I uh, in the toolbar here, and as you can see, there's um, basic functionality here too, and this is all for interacting with this particular hosted machine. When I click the little on button, this is equivalent of turning on a PC except it's all running on my local machine here. And so what this should do is basically start this virtual machine. And because I was pointing to uh, the Ubuntu ISO, that means it's actually going to kick off. It's the same as booting off of if I actually burned a, a DVD for uh, Ubuntu. And I'm basically uh, running it off of there. And so the point is, is I easily, you know, just very easily go into, you know, install Ubuntu, and this is uh, pretty much self-explanatory. This is as probably as easy as the Windows installer uh, you know, is for installing an operating system. And basically, you just follow the prompts, and uh, there really isn't anything too terribly complicated from it. And the great part is that once, you're, once you get through the setup, you basically have a fully functioning Ubuntu machine. And so that means you can either, you know, to connect to it, you, either, you can either open up Hyper-V and double-click on it, or you can, you know, go into this machine, you know, actually log into the Ubuntu machine and install a VNC, for example, and connect the VNC um, from your uh, from your host machine. So those are some of the options. But basically, that's all there is to uh, installing an Ubuntu uh, instance, and it's very very similar for any other any other Linux distribution or uh, or like I said, Windows uh, implementations are the same too. Now this is too big for the uh, for the rest of the video, so I won't show you. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know or leave a question in the comments. Thanks.